I think you and I take a different line here. So I've spent a lot of time arguing for, uh, specifically about the, the, there's, there being a kind of zero-sum contest between religion and science, right? Or believing things for good reasons and believing things for bad reasons, or uh, flip that around. Yeah. Um, and you, ha you haven't. I think you've been loath to hit them against one another in a way that will reliably turn people off to science. If you tell people that they, you know, they can't have their resurrection and their cosmology too, a significant number of Americans will say, well, okay, fuck your cosmology. I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stick with Jesus. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, obviously you're not alone in that. But so like, for one, do you acknowledge that that's a difference between the way we have kind of played the, the game intellectually? Um, in I think so. Yeah. Um, it'd be good to, you know, if, if that's something you want, we probably should, you know, expand on that somewhat. But, but I think that's the case. And... Um, um, you know, my feeling from the outside, watching, and I, I don't even mean to put you in this group, because this may not be accurate, but I've certainly seen uh, certain members of the science community going out into the world in a way that I consider um, ineffective right. uh, toward their own stated goal, and that feels irrational to me. Uh, you know, to go out into the world and tell people that you're stupid for certain kinds of beliefs, um, strikes me as not the best strategy, right? I mean, you know, the strategy that I feel works is to go out into the world with a passion and enthusiasm for the things that you think are, are good to understand and important to understand and point in a, in, a, in a valuable direction and to hope that the energy and the momentum from those kinds of conversations will drive things in a good direction. I've never felt the need to go out into the world and slap down other things. Right. That's not how I want to spend my time, and I've never found that an effective approach. Yeah, well, it, it, I, I totally understand that. <laughs> I think there are some, so, so having taken uh, the other line, and, and now <laughs> I, have a, <laughs> I have a fair amount of experience with this. Um, I can tell you that there, there are a few myths here that, that could, could be and perhaps should be retired. One is the idea that, that it simply never works, right? That you can never reason someone out of something they weren't reasoned into. You know, so someone you know, was born to a faith, they've had it drummed into them by their parents, they're now massively attached to it emotionally. Yeah. They, get, they, they get to adulthood, it's still the most important thing in their life. They've taught their children to believe likewise. There's, you can't tell, you can't reason that person out of these, this set of, these sets of convictions. Uh, that's just untrue because I hear from these people all the time who have watched some debate or watched some video, no matter how uh, offensive at first glance. Uh, th they're susceptible to just seeing the, the bad evidence and the bad arguments that have been propping up their faith, you know, low these many millennia. But not to interrupt, let me yeah. just quickly say that I, I agree with the capacity to shift people's attitudes, perspectives, beliefs. Because right. I've had those experiences too, but I've done it a different way. And when I've gotten people coming up to me or writing me emails saying, you know, now that I understand the fundamental workings of the universe a little bit better and understand the cosmology that the other person might have pushed off, but now that I have an understanding of what modern science is saying about these things, I just find it thrilling, and the other things that used to find, find gratifying no longer are working yeah. for me. Well, that, so I mean, so I've seen that too. Right, no, but, that, but that's, you're talking about the carrot, and I'm still talking about the stick on some Yes, point. I agree. So, but, but I I'm totally just, get it. I'm saying the stick also works. You know, it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and, but I guess what I've said to you is, if the stick works, and the right. carrot works, first, I think they're probably working on different people. Let's put that to the side for right. the moment. Which would you rather use? I found and you, I'm saying... I found you can only hit someone so hard with a carrot. Well, <laughs> and, and I found you don't need to hit them at all. Well, so, but I, I should just say, so for instance, just to kind of prep you for your... I think, did, did, I think Travis just announced that you're doing a, an event with Dawkins, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'm, I'm preparing you for your... your Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Much appreciated, but I've had conversations in a public setting with him before, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. please, so, uh, please come. No, but I heard, I heard his, um, I, I heard him over my shoulder when you were talking about the generic uh, offensive atheist who, who wasn't necessarily me. It might have been Richard. <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying, I'm sure he's sitting on tens of thousands of emails from people who sure. can honestly say, you know, though, though I thought you were an offensive bastard at the beginning, you actually argued me out of my most cherished beliefs. So that, I'm just saying, as a matter of sociology, that happens, right? Yeah, sure. now, but yet it's counterintuitive. We all know that there is this phenomenon, I mean, this has actually been, been now uh, studied up to a point, this, this notion of a backfire effect, where you, when you challenge people's beliefs, and you, even when you, you, when you provide them with counter evidence to those beliefs, they, there's some part of the, the human nervous system that just doubles down in the face of, of counter evidence, and they leave this confrontation believing what they believe even more uh, ardently than they did in the first place. So that, that happens, uh, but I guess it's, I mean, it, in part it's a matter of taste. It's certainly a matter of just how you want to spend your time. I, com I completely get that you don't want to be the guy who is just the go-to guy for, you know, why you can't have your, your cake and eat it too in, in the matter of, of science versus religion. But uh, have you ever found yourself on specific issues where the... To take one, so we were just talking about the environment and, you know, and nuclear, the prospect of nuclear war. There are religious ideas that seemingly perfectly inoculate people against viewing those as problems. There's no, there's no degree to which we could despoil the environment, and there's no threat of nuclear cataclysm so salient that could get a fundamentalist Christian, say, who's waiting for Jesus to return and hurl sinners into a lake of fire to really worry about those problems. Because on, on some level, those are the things that have to happen as precursors to the, the glorious end of the world. I mean, it's, it's, it's you just, as a matter of biblical prophecy, you can just connect the dots and the, you know, things really do have to go to hell in a handbasket in order for the best thing that's ever going to happen to finally happen. So th those are the, all the signs and, and, and wonders that they're waiting to see, right? Uh, so if you find yourself in the presence of that kind of dogmatism, where the worse things get, really the better they're getting, right. because Jesus is going to come back and solve all our problems, uh, don't you feel as a, just as, as a, uh, don't you feel like an, an intellectual, and or ethical responsibility as a scientist to push hard on the, those specific beliefs that, that stand in the way of thinking rationally about those problems? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. In fact, it's one that, that I have had that conversation with Richard. Hmm. And um, we came to an interesting point, which is I'm rarely confronted with the situation that you describe. And we suspect, at least it emerged from our conversation, because um, there's more of a, a focus, if you will, on the biological sciences as the place where a fundamentalist religious perspective will look for a point of confrontation. Yeah, with evolution, yeah. Yeah, then with, you know, somebody who's talking about vibrating strings and extra dimensions and the kind of abstract science that I focus my research attention on. So I'm not in that situation. I'm rarely. In fact, I don't think I'm ever in that situation. And that may, if I were, well, on a regular basis, I'll, I'll come along with you. Around. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. shatter you. And, uh, Take you to a couple of parties. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know.